Hello and welcome to ASTM C140 Standard Test Method for sampling and testing concrete masonry units and related units. ASTM C140 covers the physical properties of concrete masonry units. These properties include the absorption of the unit, measured in pounds per cubic foot, as well as a percentage of the weight of the unit. It also covers the unit weight or density of the unit, the moisture content of the unit, as well as the compressive strength of the unit. Now, of course, to get these measurements, we will need the dimensions of the unit as well. Also covered in this standard is flexural loading and ballast weight. However, not all methods are applicable to all unit types. In this presentation, we will be sampling, measuring, and then calculating the absorption, the unit weight, moisture contents, and the compressive strengths. When sampling our units, we want to select one set of units for testing. A set is considered six units for compressive strength, absorption, density, and moisture content. Unless otherwise noted, one set will suffice. After selecting our units, we want to measure the units. The device used to measure the units shall have divisions not greater than 0.1 inches or 2.5 millimeters when the dimension is to be reported to the nearest 0.1 inches. And if the measurements of the units shall be reported to the nearest 0.01 inches, then the divisions of the measuring device shall not be greater than 0.01 inches. Depending upon the unit, the areas that will need to be measured include the length, the width, the height, the face shell thickness of the unit, and the web thickness of the unit. For our demonstration today, we will be using a standard 8 by 8 by 16 concrete masonry unit. By now, you probably know that these are nominal sizes only, and the actual size is 7 and 5 eighths by 7 and 5 eighths by 15 and 5 eighths. So now, let's proceed with testing our units for absorption. After measuring our samples, we want to get the weight of our samples as they were received. Here, we're going to be using three of our six samples. However, in this demonstration, we'll be using just one sample. And here, this is the WR weight, or the weight received. And for our example, it's 27.91 pounds. We now want to submerse our units in water at 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to submerse the units for at least 24 hours, but not more than 28 hours. After 24 to 28 hours, we want to remove our samples from the water. After removing the sample from water, allow it to drain for 60 plus or minus 5 seconds, and then remove any visible surface water with a damp cloth. Next, record the saturated weight. For our example here, that weight is 29.41 pounds. This is WS in the calculation. We can now get the immersed weight, or WI as it is in the calculation, by weighing our specimens while suspended by a metal wire and completely submerged in water. Gently shake the wire to remove any trapped air bubbles that may be present in and around the specimen. For our example here, the WI weight is 12.73 pounds. We now want to place our specimens in an oven at 230 plus or minus 9 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of not less than 24 hours and until two successive weighings at intervals of two hours show an increment of loss 
not greater than 0.2% of the last weighing. For our example here, our oven dry weight, or WD in the calculation, is 26.71 pounds. Before moving on to the calculations, let's first review the data which we have obtained. The received weight, or WR, was 27.91 pounds. The saturated weight, WS, was 29.24 pounds. The immersed weight, the WI, was 12.73 pounds. And the oven dry weight, WD, was 26.71 pounds. When calculating absorption, you want to record it in pounds per cubic foot and also as a percentage of the unit. Let's first do the absorption in pounds per cubic foot. To do this, we take the saturated weight minus the oven dry weight divided by the saturated weight minus the immersed weight and multiply this number by 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, which is the weight of one cubic foot of water. And if we add in the data that we have recorded, we should be at 29.24 pounds minus 26.71 pounds divided by 29.24 pounds minus 12.73 pounds times 62.4, which should equal 9.56 pounds per cubic foot of absorption. Next, let's calculate our absorption in percentage. To do this, we want to take the saturated weight of the unit minus the oven dry weight of the unit and divide this number by the oven dry weight of the unit and multiply it by 100. So here, if we plug in our numbers, we should have 29.24 pounds minus 26.71 pounds divided by 26.71 pounds times 100 for an absorption of 10.11%. The next calculation that we're going to take a look at is density. Since density is reported in pounds per cubic foot, here we're going to take the oven dry weight and divide it by the saturated weight minus the immersed weight times 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And again, if we plug in our data, we should have 26.71 pounds divided by 29.24 pounds minus 12.73 pounds times 62.4 pounds per cubic foot for a density of 100.95 pounds per cubic foot. We now want to move on to calculating our compressive strength. However, before we can do that, we must first calculate the net area of our unit in square inches. And in order to calculate the net area in square inches, we must first calculate the net volume in cubic feet. So let's begin with the net volume of our unit in cubic feet. To calculate the net volume, or in this case Vn, is a very simple calculation. We simply take the oven dry weight and divide it by the density of the unit, or in our case, 26.71 pounds divided by 100.95 pounds per cubic foot leaves us with a net volume of 0.2646 cubic feet. Now that we have our net volume, we can calculate our net area. We do this by converting our net volume, which is in cubic feet, to cubic inches by multiplying it by 1,728, the amount of cubic inches in a cubic foot, and then dividing this value by the height of the unit in inches. And again, if we simply plug in our previously acquired data, we have 0.2646 
times 1,728 divided by the height of the unit, which is 7.625 inches, we should come up to 59.96 square inches as our average net area of the unit. And now we can move ahead with our compressive strength calculations. As always, compressive strength is calculated as load over area. Let's assume that we have broken three units and our loads were 219,130 pounds, 210,700 pounds, and 217,110 pounds. This gives us an average load of 215,646 pounds, divided by our net area of 59.96 square inches, gives us a PSI of 3,600 for our units when we're rounding to the nearest 10. Now a final calculation that is often requested is the moisture content of the unit as it was received. So in this case we want to take the weight received or the WR minus the oven dry weight or WD and divide it by the oven dry weight. So for our example here that would be 27.91 pounds minus 26.71 pounds divided by 26.71 pounds times 100 would give us a moisture content of the unit as it was received of 4.5 percent. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude ASTM C140 standard method for sampling and testing concrete masonry units and related units.